Hello everyone, welcome to Dixie's Storytime World. A twisted fairy tale, Snow White and the Seven Robots, written by Stuart Ross. If you want to buy a copy of this book, the link is available in the description at the bottom of this video. Far away, in another galaxy, there lived a powerful queen. Not a nice, smiling queen, but a nasty, mean and selfish queen. She was called the Star Queen because she ruled everything even the stars, but she was unhappy. She spent most of her time looking at pictures of old classmates on Spacebook, her mega computer, and feeling jealous. One day, the Star Queen demanded, view screen, view screen on the wall, who is doing best of all? The answer flashed up immediately, your daughter, Snow White. Liar, screamed the Star Queen. I'm doing best of all. I've sent all left-handed people to prison. I've used half the water in the galaxy to build an ice palace on a desert planet, and I make all the children eat snail porridge every day. Isn't that the best, Squeezy? She asked her pet astro python. It is so, O oh queen, he hissed, and that stupid Snow White has done nothing, she continued. All she does is fiddle around with machines and wires and mess about in the vegetable plot. I must get rid of that miserable little girl now. At supper that evening, the Star Queen said she needed to visit Prince Cosmos. But I'm too busy, she added slyly. Would you go for me, dear Snow White? Snow White was good friends with Prince Cosmos. Just like her, he was a keen gardener. I'll pack some seeds to show him, she said. However, it was a trap. The Star Queen had made a special rocket for the trip. It would fly to nowhere and never arrive. Snow White would be stuck in nothingness forever. Ha ha! Serves her right, cackled the Star Queen as she watched Snow White's rocket take off. We'll never see her again, thank goodness. Then she went back to doing what she liked best, building evil robots, just like her daughter. She was a clever engineer. In the space rocket, Snow White looked around in horror. Oh no, she thought, something has gone wrong. We're not going to Prince Cosmos's planet. In fact, we're going nowhere and very fast. Instead of panicking, she rolled up her sleeves and got to work. She did some counting, pressed buttons, joined wires together, and slowly, very slowly, she steered the rocket toward a tiny green planet. Her computer said it was called Planet Smarty. The rocket still didn't work very well. It wibbled and wobbled before landing with a loud crash. Snow White picked herself up off the floor and looked out the window. Hmm, it looks all right, she said to herself. Carefully, she opened the door and stepped outside. What a strange place, thought Snow White, as she walked between weird plants and trees. There were collie munchers with hungry mouths and greedy eyes and holly grabbers with branches like arms. I'm not sure it's safe, said Snow White to herself. I think I'd better return to. My egg! The twiggy fingers of a holly grabber had wrapped around her arm. Let me go, please, cried Snow White. It was no good. More twisty twigs coiled about her arms and legs, holding her tight. The chief collie muncher scrabbled up to her. Sorry about this, it said, but we're going to eat you. Eat me, she exclaimed. How horrible! Why me? Because we've got nothing else, explained the collie muncher. The Star Queen has stolen all our water to build her ice palace. And now the plants we eat won't grow. So all we've got to eat, wait, said Snow White, trying to remain calm. First, I'm not at all tasty, all skin and bones. Second, if you set me free, I'll grow the best food you've ever tasted. Do we have a deal? The collie munchers and holly grabbers chattered together. Right said the holly grabber who had taken a hold of Snow White. Two weeks, feed us, or else. What my friend means, explained the chief collie muncher, is that if you don't get us food, our next meal will be you. Fair enough, said Snow White. A feast for everyone in two weeks. Promise, hmm, <laughs> sniffed the holly grabber. Foolish promise. Just you, food for everyone. Impossible. Snow White returned to her rocket and brought out a set of tools. But it won't be just me, she said with a smile. Watch. In four days, using pieces of the broken rocket, she made seven robot helpers. There was Squeaky, who needed a drop of oil, and Creaky, who
whose joints weren't quite right. Rusty was made of the oldest rocket pieces. Jerky moved like a puppet. Wonky's head wasn't straight, and Blinky's eyes didn't work too well. But halfway through the seventh robot, Snow White stopped. Oh dear, she had run out of brain parts. The seventh robot had a purple plastic body with metal arms and legs. Its square box head had a face with beautiful green eyes and a lovely smile. But inside it was almost empty. Sorry, box, said Snow White, sadly giving him a kiss on his cheek. I know you're not very smart, but you're extremely kind. That's all right, Snow White, he said. Now that I'm finished, may I start work? You sure can, she cried. So can the others. Come on, Squeaky, Creaky, Rusty, Jerky, Wonky, and Blinky. Let's get farming. In three days, they dug fields and planted some fast-growing seeds that Snow White had packed before leaving. The collie munchers and holly grabbers watched in amazement as the plants grew day and night. After five days, they were ready. Snow White and her robots harvested them and cooked them in huge pots made from leftover pieces of rocket. That evening, the collie munchers and holly grabbers sat down to the biggest, tastiest meal they'd ever eaten. Back in her palace, the Star Queen was building her latest invention. Deadly robots disguised as delicious fruit. She called them fruit fiends. She was frustrated because she couldn't get the apple to work properly. Why don't you just ask Space Book, O oh Queen? suggested the Astro Python. Good idea, for once, said the Queen. But first, I'll ask it an important question once more. This time, I know it'll tell the truth. View screen, view screen on the wall, she cackled. Who is doing best of all? Again, the answer flashed up immediately. Snow White. Impossible, she screamed. Show her to me. The view screen played a video of Snow White and her robots enjoying a large meal with the collie munchers and holly grabbers. How horrible, screeched the queen. Where are they? On planet Smarty, replied Spacebook. Right, growled the queen. This time she will not escape. She loaded seven fruit fiend robots into a flying fiend rocket. They looked like a bunch of bananas, an orange, a pear, a bunch of grapes, a pineapple, a melon, and an apple. But they were deadly dangerous. Guided by Spacebook, the flying fiend rocket zoomed through space to planet Smarty. It landed in the field where Snow White's robots were working. The door flew open and out rolled the fruit fiend robots looking like juicy fruits. Oh, look, said Squeaky, picking up a banana, a delicious piece of fruit. As he was speaking, the fiend split open the banana skin and fired a sharp dart straight at Squeaky's heart. Bing! It bounced off his metal body and landed in the mud. Hmm, so that's your nasty trick, is it? muttered Squeaky. He grabbed the fiend and shoved it into his harvest bag. Creaky did the same with the fiend inside the orange, rusty with the pear, jerky with a bunch of grapes. Wonky with the pineapple, and Blinky with the melon. But when Box saw the rosy red apple, he thought, How delicious! A perfect present for Snow White. He lifted it up carefully and set off to find her. This was the moment the sneaky fruit fiend had been waiting for. It burst out of the apple, and, with a wicked cry, fired its dart straight at Snow White's heart. When the dart hit her, Snow White gave a little cry. What's the matter? asked Box. Is it the apple? Snow White's eyes began to close. Not apple, she yawned, but something inside. Without another word, she fell to the ground fast asleep. Box's green eyes were full of tears as he knelt beside her. Wake up, he begged. Please wake up. Snow White did not move. A horrid robot thing was hiding in the apple. The chief collie muncher gasped. Grab it, Box! Box seized the apple fiend and stuffed it into his bag. The robots, the collie munchers and the holly grabbers all tried to wake Snow White. When she remained asleep, they laid her gently down on a bed of the softest stardust. Squeaky took Box's bag and shook out the apple fiend. What did you do? he demanded. I only fired my dart, he replied, like the Star Queen ordered me to. She dipped the dart in a sleeping potion. When it enters someone's heart, they fall asleep for a thousand years. Thousand years, howled Squeaky, Creaky, Rusty, Jerky, Wonky, Blinky, and Box. Yes, 
said the apple fiend and the only way she will wake up before that is if someone pulls the dart out of her heart i'll do it cried box eagerly he was keen to make up for his terrible mistake you can't sneered the fiend the dart is invisible you can't pull out something you can't see stupid squeaky grew even more angry all right you do it you little monster he shouted why should i tim pot the fiend replied rudely just as things were becoming a little unpleasant there was a loud whirring noise moments later a shiny blue spaceship landed on the field the door opened and a handsome young man stepped out hello everyone he said cheerfully then seeing the glum looks on the faces of the robots he asked what's the matter are you guys having some sort of problem here can i help it was prince cosmos after squeaky had explained to the prince what had happened he asked if he could see snow white lying there fast asleep she looked so beautiful there must be a way to wake her he said with a sigh there is croaked rusty but only the apple fiend can do it why because no one else can see the dart explained blinky his eyelashes flapping like butterfly wings this gave wonk an idea if the apple fiend took the dart from snow white's heart they would promise to free all the fruit fiends great thinking said prince cosmos but when they told the apple fiend about it it shook its spidery head no way first we can't leave in our rocket because only the star queen knows how to start it second we don't want to go back to star palace we hate the star queen she bullies us and makes us do things we don't want to do like sending snow white to sleep prince cosmos frowned you mean he said to the apple fiend none of you actually likes the star queen the apple fiend nodded if we disobey her she takes out our batteries and when she's very angry she pulls off our legs ouch too cruel the prince frowned listen i have a plan but when he explained his idea to the apple fiend it shook its head i told you before our rocket won't work unless the star queen starts it oh yes it will chorused the robots snow white can start it she can do anything she is the smartest person in the whole universe added creaky and the nicest box said with a sniff prince cosmos agreed well if she's as smart as that said the apple fiend i'll see what i can do watching in case it changed its mind and tried to escape the robots and prince cosmos took the apple fiend to where snow white lay on her stardust bed prince cosmos was biting his fingernails box was crying please wake up snow white he sobbed please please the apple fiend stretched out two hairy arms seized something no one else could see and pulled there was a noise like a cork leaving a bottle and the apple fiend fell over backward snow white yawned and slowly opened an eye then two eyes before long she was sitting up and talking with her friends that afternoon they held an enormous smarty party to celebrate her waking up now that everyone knew they weren't really horrible even the fruit fiends were allowed to join in when the dancing was over snow white set to work on the flying fiend rocket helped by squeaky and rusty she quickly worked out how to start it the fruit fiends climbed aboard and snow white switched on the engine five four three two one lift off the rocket was soon out of sight and zooming back towards star palace the star queen was waiting for her fruit fiend robots when they landed what she screamed why and how only i can start that rocket i will explain said the apple fiend calmly better be good she snarled the best best she sneered my view screen tells me i am always doing best of all the apple fiend shook its head i don't think so before we left i heard it say snow white was doing best of all liar howled the queen her silver skin turning red with fury no replied the apple fiend doing best means being kind and helpful not showing off and bullying people the star queen had heard enough she charged at the fruit fiends threatening to remove each of their batteries and use them for spare parts in a washing machine help help squeaked the fruit fiends in a panic they all fired their invisible darts piercing her cruel heart she closed her eyes and slid to the floor the evil star queen would sleep for thousands of years back on planet smarty snow white and prince cosmos were digging and planting more seeds but maybe it's time to continue my journey he said after a few days 
where to asked snow white actually i'm not sure he replied i came here looking for you and now that you've found me she said and smiled why don't you stay may i of course he did and as far as i know snow white prince cosmos the seven robots the collie munchers and the holly grabbers are still there all very very happy the end thanks for listening i'll see you soon in another adventure kids always remember to be good and kind thanks for watching and listening enjoy more stories at dixie storytime world on youtube we're also available on the kids youtube app